Hello, y'all. My name is Snow Pam, and we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of a project today. It's a concrete Dutch couple. Uh, as you see, they're kind of nasty, kind of gross, and we're going to be turning them into something new and improved. So first off, we're starting off with the power washing. You have to be pretty close with it to get all the shit off of it. It's basically just like moss, dirt. It has to be a completely clean surface before you start painting. So just wiping that all down. And then after it's dry, I go over twice with a base. It's a white base paint so that I have a clean, fresh surface to start on. It also helps the concrete like absorb some paint and absorbs white paint so that you don't have to take as much acrylic paint of your colors to uh, get it nice and saturated. Uh, we're starting off with the girl because, you know, ladies first. Basically, the main thing is getting all the base layers down of the general colors and then going in with the details. Because if you start going in with the details when you're not, when you don't have a nice opaque layer, it's like, what, what's even the point, right? Uh, with this paint in particular, I got this acrylic outdoors paint that I got from Walmart. Uh, the, I got like the bigger containers, they're like five bucks each. It's pretty affordable, I think. I got all the primary colors. Uh, red, yellow, blue, and then also green and white and black. And then in smaller containers, I got like a flesh color and I got a brown. I find that red is the least opaque color. So that's the color that needs the most amount of layers in order for it to look good. I think this took about seven layers back and forth. Thankfully, acrylic paint takes a short amount of time to dry. So it works pretty well with just basically me going around in a circle throughout the entire dress. White and black are the most opaque, so they typically only need like one or two coats in order to look good. In this experience, I'm not a very good precision painter, so it's basically me going into the big areas, getting the general color, and then uh, if there are like a bunch of mistakes, it's like I'll go in with a smaller brush afterward and touch it up. It's really, if you're doing this yourself, it's more uh, keeping your own eye on it and seeing like, can I see the previous color underneath it? Does it look as vibrant as I want it to be? It's really just going to be taking your own eye and saying like, oh yeah, that, that looks reasonable. And with the flesh tone wasn't too difficult. That only took one or two coats. Uh, the main thing was making sure it's like keeping those lines nice and clean. I didn't use any tape. So that was a little more difficult and even if I did it, concrete, especially older concrete like this, it has a lot of bumps and ridges on it. I decided that the flowers by themselves really wouldn't be enough for me. So I decided to go around those like curved sections. I think it's supposed to resemble like the curve of the apron, but I just thought like, oh, that's a line that's supposed to be a different color. So I took a light blue and colored that in. Going as far of a stroke as you can is really important instead of just doing like little itty bitty strokes at a time. So this is one day of painting. I've been going at it for about four hours and uh, we got her base colors done and I've started going in on the detailing, getting the flowers and the stripes as neat as I can. And then uh, I just finished with doing one layer green on the back. Uh, most of it's been spending time like cleaning up stuff, like the seams of these uh, ties and the uh, collaring of her dress. Uh, tomorrow I hope to get her done with the uh, flower petals and the face and the like shading and things and then we'll move on to that boy because he's just been uh, waiting so patiently. But yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've gotten done and I'll see y'all tomorrow. So the face isn't too complicated, especially since uh, their eyes are gonna be closed. You first have your base of tan and then go in with a sponge and a peachy pink 
mixing a little bit of red into the skin tone and making it a nice like light pink take a sponge and dabble it onto the areas that you want that blushing to be and then afterwards go back in with your skin color and blend it in I got a circular sponge from the dollar store that I used to dollop on the paint and then smooth it in. It's very much like blending blush on your own face, just making sure you go back and forth and back and forth until you get the desired contouring and like mixing and blending that you want. I'm not entirely experienced with blending, so this did take a little bit of trial and error, but eventually I got what I wanted and then I took a dotting tool. I got this from the dollar store as well. It's pretty... It's pretty good for just getting the little exact lines that you want. Now this, you do have to take in fine strokes because uh, it doesn't absorb any paint. So you're just having the very little bit and you cannot paint with the tip. It's basically taking the paint on there and just very, very lightly gliding it across the surface. Using the same color as the blushing, go in to the lips and just match the outline that is already aligned on the face. She had a pretty flat face apart from her nose and like the bottom of her jaw. But other than that, you're able to get pretty crisp lines and good placement. Uh, I chose a darker color for both the eyelid and the eyebrows, just so that they would stand out more than the yellow. After that, you can do a little bit of highlighting or shading and then the face is done. And finally, just go around and see if there are any touch-ups that you need to make, if there's any white going over the red, or if you have some yellow that needs to get touched up on the hat or anything, basically. And then uh, the last detail is on the shoes. I thought the shoes were pretty boring by themselves. And then I decided at the end there to make them alternate colors to make them a little more uh, interesting color-wise. And then after that, her paint job is done. and it is time to move on to our little sir, our little man, little little husband gent. Just a little detail, just a little tip around the whole body. When you're doing your basic colors, go in with a large paintbrush and get everything covered. And then once all the layers that you want, like the opaqueness is there, go around with a sponge and just dabble paint where you see little white speckles. I didn't see this towards the end, but there was a little white speckles underneath his arms. And it's like, that's, pretty obvious now that I think about it but you have to go in with a sponge brush and do that because a normal paintbrush would not get into those crevices the same way the dotting tool doesn't get into the eyebrow so the boys painting process isn't super different so I'm just gonna give you the play-by-play -play highlights uh, the main thing is the like painting details and shading I found the shading and the detail work on him was a bit tricky because he's missing a lot of the guidelines that the girl had like in the back he's holding a bouquet of flowers but it's not entirely clear where the flowers go and where the stems and the leaves go and where his hands are so you just kind of have to go around and use your eyes the best you can to just point out the most d detail you can see and then just kind of guess and fudge it until hopefully it looks like something Due to the amount of detail on it, using a flat color like I did for most of the girl wasn't enough for it to look pleasant to the eye, so I decided to mix up the two colors I used for the bouquet, um, red and green. I mixed brown into both of them and did some shading to make the stems look more three-dimensional and also make it look like there's an inside to the flowers that he's holding. It's not entirely realistic, I'll give you that, but it is something nonetheless. The main thing for me was going around the outside of the bouquet where the flowers and some of the leaves meet his pants, making sure that the lines, like the edges of the flowers make sense and then it doesn't get into his pants because both blue and red end up being pretty translucent and take a while to fix. And then that is the bouquet. Going in with the face, we're also missing a lot of detail, mostly in his eyes and in his cheeks. Uh, to paint his eyelashes, it's going the same shape as the girl with, it, with the dotting tool, and then going in with a very small brush and just plotting paint 
where the holes are. The dotting tool is too big to go into those crevices, but a tiny little paintbrush that's like composed of a single hair can get in there pretty well. And then just making his eyebrows a little bit wider to make him look a little more masculine. And I added a little highlight on the top of his nose because you can paint the face however you like. You can make him into an alien if you really wanted to. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Moving on down to the shoes. It's yellow because that's what you do with shoes apparently. And for the patterning on the front, I decided to do windmills. I go in with the underlying color and then going in with a very small brush and painting in the lines. And you do not use a Sharpie for this. If you feel tempted to use a Sharpie, do not, and I will tell you why in a second. But once you get that done, it's very good to like be precise and slow about it, but you can always go in and fix it with white or red or whatever color. I chose to do alternating again with the red and blue just to give it color contrast and match his little girlfriend or waifu over there. And that means they are both done. Their paint jobs are complete. But in order for their paint jobs to remain pristine and beautiful for the rest of eternity, hopefully, uh, we do a clear matte top coat. This is a, again, a spray going around with two layers. I spray it, let it dry for 20 minutes, and then go on for another coat. I can tell you that Sharpie does smear when you use this type of spray paint, or just in general. I used a gloss top coat spray for my Poe Dameron helmet video and I had Sharpie to like refine details and the Sharpie smeared. So it's just a little thing. I'm not expecting you to do any Sharpie amazing things and then put a spray on it, but it is a good thing to know nonetheless. And that being said, they are finally done. I have seen them out in the rain these past couple of days and they are lasting and they are looking fantastic. Uh, anyway, that is going to be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know. Have any comments, concerns, leave them, leave them down in the comments. Love to hear from you. And uh, that being said, I will see y'all next time. Toodles!